Hey everyone, I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor, and in this Morales tutorial, we're going to build an ERC20 token. Essentially, we're going to follow an ERC20 token standard, and there are different kinds of standards out there for different use cases. The number 20 is heavily used for creating tokens, and it is co-authored by Vitalik himself. Now, every standard has its own functions, and no matter what custom code we put into our contract, we know for a fact that if we're using a, st a standard, uh, it will be included so we can call those functions that are provided. So when I later going to show you how you can display the token we're creating inside our MetaMask wallet, you might ask yourself, how does MetaMask know what to display? That's because MetaMask calls the functions within the standard that exist that we use in our smart contract. So before I show you all that and the code, let me demonstrate the finalized product that we're going to create. So I have already created this token and if I go to MetaMask, you can see that it is displayed right here, the MTT token. And we can also see it down here, but I have copied the contract address. So I'm going to Morales to use this get token metadata endpoint. And I deployed mine to Guerli and let's add that address right here. When we try this out, we're going to get the metadata for this token. So it's Morales test token, the MTT one. Uh, how many decimals? It's 18 and it was created today. So let me show you how you can do this as well with your own token. And let's play around with MetaMask to add it with Remix, the IDE. So go to remix.ethereum.org and we're going to use this to create our smart contract and to deploy it as well. So I'm just going to shut this one down and create a new file within the contracts folder. And I'm going to call this the Morales smart token. .sol. So the first line in every Solidity smart contract tells uh, the network what version of Solidity we want to use. And we're going to use uh, the 0 0.8.0. And this uptick right here basically express that uh, this is compatible with every version uh, above 0 0.8, basically. Then you can implement the ERC20 standard, as I said before, in different ways. We're going to use Open Zeppelin, which is an Ethereum security company that develops secure and well-tested reference contracts. So we can import the ERC20 token like this. Now let's specify a new contract called Morales Smart Token. And we want to build this uh, with an instance of ERC20. So all the functions and logic that is built into ERC20 are now available for us to use. So let's do like this and call it Morales Smart Token. Then we want to add a constructor, which is a special function that gets called uh, the first time the contract gets deployed to the network. So for our token, we want to have something that all other tokens have as well. And if you notice Bitcoin, for example, that's the name of the token, but it has also a symbol, which is BTC. And the same goes for Ethereum. That's the name and its symbol is ETH. So if you check the ERC20 contract, you'd see that it has its own constructor that needs two things from us, two parameters, the name and the symbol. So how can we call the constructor of ERC20 when our contract gets deployed? We can do it like this. And then here we can add, this takes two parameters, by the way. So the first one is the name and the second one is uh, the symbol. So we could actually hard code it like this, smart token, for example. And then uh, let's add the symbol. But we don't want to hard code this. We want the user that deploys the smart contract to actually choose themselves. So we're going to add this as variables instead. Like so. So that means our constructor in here needs to take two parameters and then pass these along to the ERC20 constructor. like this and before we finish this up we want to give some tokens to ourselves right 
So again, inside the ERC20 contract, uh, there's a function called mint that takes two parameters, the address to send to and the amount of tokens. So we want to call that function. And msg.sender is a global variable that is basically the address that deployed the contract. And then we need to do some formatting because uh, we can't read decimals using Solidity. So this is basically it for our smart contract. Now we can go to the uh, compiler here and compile this smart contract. And we can see there's nothing wrong with it. So let's move to the deploy and run transaction tab. And we're going to use injected provider MetaMask. And here is where we can deploy our contract. But in this drop down, this is the variables that we're going to add our name and symbol for this for the token that we have created. So uh, Morales smart token. And then the symbol is MST, let's say. So we do a transaction and MetaMask pops up. We need to confirm this. And there we have it. So in the, you see it got deployed immediately. So we can have the contract address from here. We can also view this on Etherscan. So if we click that link, we can see that uh, it's pending for the moment, but this should only take like a few seconds. So if you refresh the page for a few times or wait a minute, then you should see a success confirmation right here that the contract is deployed basically. Perfect, there we have it. So it went pretty quickly. So if we go back to Remix and copy this uh, contract address, let's pop up MetaMask. I'm going to show you how to add this into MetaMask. Go into Assets and Import Tokens and paste this in. So automatically it's going to recognize the symbol and the decimal. This is because now MetaMask is using the functions that are provided by the standard we used. So when we add custom token, uh, we can see the balance. So we got a thousand tokens to ourselves and import tokens. So if we go back, we can see it right here. So this is pretty cool to build pretty quickly with just like not even 10 lines of code. Now let's go back to Morales to this get token metadata endpoint. Choose Guerly, add our token or contract address, try this out and we can see the metadata right here. That shows you how easy it is to create an ERC20 token using the standards and then using the Morales API to get the metadata for this token. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you post them below in the comment section and I will help you out. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.